Look how low this tide is. What's up everybody and welcome. Today we're actually sitting in a 368 Pursuit. This boat just showed up because we're getting no output from the generator. So we're gonna do some testing and see what's going on there. As you can see in the title, we're gonna probably have to do some back end testing. Let's just uh, start with starting it and seeing what we got for output on our gauge. And then we'll test it at the generator if we got nothing on our gauge here. All right, let's see what we got first here. So our generator's off. Let's turn this on. Get it fired up. All right, so she's running. That's a good sign. Should be able to flip our panel. Let's make sure everything's off first. We should have voltage on this gauge already. As we can see, we got nothing. So let's turn this back off. Get into our generator here, we'll pull the panel off, pull the leads off. That way we can test it directly at the generator. Coffee. All right, where it says danger high voltage. I'm gonna pull this off so we can get our leads off. This thing only has three wires, so it looks like it's wired at 120. All right, so under our panel here, we have our three leads for output. Take these off, and we don't make sure we don't have a problem coming from the house side here. We'll run it again and check output right here. This black wire should be our hot, and our neutral and common are right here. All right, so we got our wires off. These all these little wires here, the H1 and all that. That's what we're gonna have to test: the Z2, H1. If we got no power, we're gonna see why. I've seen if maybe the stator has grounded itself out or something happened to one of the legs. So let's run it again and we'll check power between these two. Well, as you can see, 0.8 is not enough volts to do anything. So let's pull this stuff apart here. And then we can do some testing, which I have this paper right here. And we can measure our resistance and everything and see if we've shorted the ground somewhere, which is what it seems like to me. All right, so I've taken all of our wires off of our board here. We can individually test all of our back end stuff. It's a good idea to make a cheat sheet to where they all go. So now, we can start testing our stator wires. See if we got a uh, short to ground or something causing it to not output. All right, so as I go through the tests, I'll mark them down, see if it passes, and we know what happened here. This is all Ohm's testing. All right, so I'm gonna try to show you this the best way I can in the camera here. When I put my meter together, you hear the beeping that's grounded shouldn't hear that sound between any of these connections. Brown wires are one, or H, Z. So what we'll do, we should be able to go between them and see which one has failed us. So we can go H1 to Z1, which is here. Brown, I'm oh, sorry. Start the test from the beginning here. H1. Our white is Z. Oh, we got no beeping there. Let's go Z1 to H2. Z1 again. H2 is our brown. And no beeping. Let's go Z1 to Z2, which is our white, to purple. Oh, immediate. They're grounded. This is the reason we're not getting any power. Our stator 
has one leg that has grounded itself for some reason. So it looks like our Z1 and Z2 is short to ground. I'll put the camera here. So if anybody wants to do this test themselves, just stop the, stop the screen and you can uh, go through this yourself. But these ones are the important ones here. None of these are grounded. These right here are usually what uh, causes a failure. All right, so we know the back end has failed here. Now we gotta get this thing out of the boat. So let me go talk to the boss and see what he wants me to do. All right, just talk to the boss. We're gonna get this generator out so we can send it back to Fisher Panda and they can take care of it under warranty. So you can go back in time into my other videos. I pulled generators out of boats multiple times. So we'll just make this real brief and then I'm just gonna do it so we can get it out of here. We got water in, fuel, and it's just the oil change hose. That's for our heat exchanger, for our antifreeze. Gotta get our exhaust off, battery cables. I've already got our in wires here out. Just gotta pull them out of that side. And also on this side, we gotta get our control board wires out and our water, our water pump, our fuel pump wire out of here. So let me get it all unhooked. We'll go from there. All right, so I got everything unhooked here. Just gotta pry the exhaust off, undo our bolts, but we're gonna wait in line. We have a real low tide right now, so while we're waiting, let's go see what the boss wants me to do. All right, so we're actually gonna wait for lunch and wait for this tide to go, but we're also gonna run this thing today. I think we'll end up yanking the generator first after lunch because we'll have tide. We don't have enough tide for this boat either, so we'll wait. We're gonna take this beast for a ride. It's got Volvos in it. And we'll see what's going on with it when we get to it. It's almost two o'clock now. We got some tide action. Now, we gotta back this boat into that slip right there. They're gonna pull that boat out. So let's jump in here, we'll back it up. generator out of the hole. I already got a chain strapped on it. Just one bolt hanging on to it. Let's get the forklift ready.
she's out of her hole. I just want to tie up some of this wiring real quick. That way the boat can leave. When it comes back, we'll have the generator fixed to put it in. Or at least Fisher Panda will have it fixed, not me. Looks like we got a little antifreeze spilled out of it when we picked it up. All right, this one's done. Now let's move on to the next one. We're gonna work on that 408 right there so that we can pull the port gear case off. It's got a problem with overheating. All right, well the boys are lifting this thing and getting ready for me. I wanna show you something that just came in. Look at this. This was at the boat show in Fort Lauderdale. Well, next to it, it's also a 48. Look at this one, because I'm sure I'm going to be on it soon. Well, what do we have here? Those are the 600 Mercury's. This one's sold. Looks like going to one of our customers that has a 456. Pretty unique dual prop. They got pods, so these motors don't even move. That's why you can get them so close together. The cowling stay. Looks like a Tierra. Pretty cool. Look at these doors. They move. With the push of a button. And close it off. Anyway, I got my boat over there, so let's go yank that gear case off. All right, let me yank this off here, and we'll see what's going on with the water pump. But she seems to not pump water very well. Ooh, she's heavy. All right, so I left the prop on this, which wasn't a good idea, because these things are over 100 pounds, probably. Let's pull this off and see what's going on. take it with you. These being 425s actually have two water pumps. They have a metal one underneath this rubber one here. I don't really see anything wrong here. Doesn't seem like there's anything wrong in our cup here either. Oh wait, I see something right now. You look inside here. It looks like it's melted. This means this has probably been moved. And I can see some rubber that rubber coming off it. Rubber right there. It's been rubbing the wrong way on top here. That could do something. It's suspect, but I'm not sure that's the problem. All right, don't pay attention to the mess. Got a lot of stuff going on here. But we got a new housing. We actually have water pump kits for the 425s. 300s we don't have nothing for. So we got a new one of these. I'm curious if this cup has moved on us. So we're gonna stick it in there and see what the difference is. Well, I think the problem here is this one shrank, being that this is melted. Doesn't look like anything shifted. Oh wait, there's a light on here. All right, so looking at this one, you can see where this ridge is, right at where that, the outlets would be right there. Well, the ridge here, and look at here, it's moved and you can see where it's melted. You also see more of that rubber stuff, so. Definitely uh, could have had a problem here. This could be why we have an issue with intermittent water flow or not very much water flow. It's got very little water pressure on this motor. So no matter what, we're gonna replace everything here. We got a whole kit. We're gonna do all that. Let me show you underneath this real quick. What's cool about these, is they also have a water pump right here. So the rubber one picks up everything at low speed, and when you get moving, this one does the job for you. It's clever, that way uh, Yamaha knows these boats are gonna go offshore and everything else, in case something fails up top, that at least you'll have something to try to make it back to the house. But we should have new O-rings, plate, all that stuff for this. Another unique thing on these is uh, these right here, so you can change the gear oil if you have the boat on a lift. Clever too. These go into a little holders. 
actually suck the gear oil out and dump it back in. You gotta do some kind of measuring or whatever. I've never done it. We always just yank them off and pl replace it, but clever idea. Let me show you one more thing outside I'm gonna do before we put this together and everything, because it's the end of the day and I think we're gonna have to continue this video tomorrow, or at least this, uh, this part of the video tomorrow. So I've been thrown into the mix of this, but this right here is a pop-up valve for pressure relief. You check that, everything's good. Pretty sure they check the thermostats in the motor just to double check to make sure before we yank this thing out of the water. What I'm gonna do is our tube here, which you can't see in the shadow, but I'm gonna hook a hose to it. And then we're gonna make sure we got good water flow through the whole motor. So we'll do that tomorrow. Well, with that being said, I'm gonna clean up my mess for the day. And I will see you guys tomorrow. As always, I appreciate everybody watching. Later. Shrimpy, no. We save you.